ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Value your praise and thanks is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone It is he whom we worship It is he whom we ask for help And it is he whom we ask for forgiveness Whomsoever he guides, none can misguide And whomsoever he misguides, none can guide and after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I like some peace and blessings upon the best of mankind and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, it is known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made all of the places the same. And there are certain places and locations which are more virtuous than others, such as Makkah and Medina. And just as Allah has not made the places the same and the locations the same, likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made the same the different times. And there are certain times which are more virtuous than others, such as the month of Ramadan being more virtuous than any other month in the year. And likewise, alhamdulillah, we have now entered into a time, into a period of 10 days, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described Afdalu ayyam in dunya That they are the best days of the whole world i.e. the best days of the year and they are the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah and it's something that we should thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for and show gratitude to Him that He has allowed us to reach this blessed and virtuous time where it is so virtuous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even took it upon himself to swear to take an oath by these 10 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالِ النَّعَشُ Allah swears by Al-Fajr. And then he says, وَلَيَالِ النَّعَشُ The majority of the ulama and mufassirun, like Ibn Kathir and others, as narrated on Ibn Abbas, they said, وَلَيَالِ النَّعَشُ is referring to these 10 days. To the 10 days of the Hijjah. And because of these days being the best days of the whole year, the Prophet وسلم, said something really profound that we should all remember during these 10 days. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ma min ayyamin al fiha. There is no days where righteous actions Ahabba ila Allah are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min hadihi al-ayyam from these 10 days. Meaning the most beloved actions that a person can do in during the year, the best time and the most beloved time to do that in is these 10 days of the hijjah And that's why you'll find many of the salaf when these 10 days would come, they would exert so much effort that some of them would not be able to do anymore. If you were to ask them, to increase and do more, they wouldn't be able to. 
It's narrated Sa'id ibn Jubayr. إِذَا دَخْلَتِ الْعَشْرِ إِشْتَهَدَ إِشْتِهَادًا حَتَّى مَا يَكَانْ يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ Now when the ten days entered, he would work so hard that he, it was as though he wasn't able to do what he had planned to do. It became so much for him. That's how much effort he would be putting in these ten days. And from this we also learn that the best days of the year are these ten. Meaning they are even better than the last ten days of Ramadan. However, the difference between the two is that we say that the nights of Ramadan, the last ten nights of Ramadan, are better than the last ten, uh, than the first ten nights of the Hijjah. But in terms of the daytime, during the day, then the best actions are done in the first ten of the Hijjah, and they are better than the daytimes of the last ten of Ramadan. And that's with Ramadan being such a virtuous month, and that Subhanallah shows how great these days are. And this is what Ibn Hajar rahimahullah he says, وَالَّذِي يَظْهَرْ أَنَّ السَّبَبَ فِي امْتِيَازِ عَشْرِ ذِي الْحِجَّةِ What seems to be apparent, why the ten of the Hijjah has remained so special? لِمَكَانِ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ أُمَّهَاتِ الْعِبَادَةِ فِي Because the greatest acts of worship have all been found in these ten. And then he mentions some of them, وَهِيَ الصَّلَاةُ وَالصِّيَامُ وَالصَّدَقَةُ وَالْحَجُ وَيَأْتِي ذَلِكَ وَلَا يَأْتِي ذَلِكَ فِي غير. Such as your prayers, and such as fasting, and such as sadaqah, and hajj itself. And we're going to talk about some of these uh, acts of worship. And these acts of worship are not found in any other days. Hajj is only in these days. It is not found in other places. And fasting as well, then, when fasting is more emphasized, apart from the month of Ramadan, and the Sunnah of the Prophet during every month, then in terms of consecutive days, then it is these uh, 10 days and that's why in these 10 days there are certain actions that a person should do and a person should increase <coughs> in to make sure that he falls under this hadith of those actions which are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from these actions firstly is all good, all different types of good deeds generally any type of good deed that you know of and that you were doing anyway previously a person should Continue with that and also try to increase in that. If he was um, reciting Quran, carry on reciting Quran. Try to increase in these 10 days. And especially those actions which are obligatory upon a person. As the, as the Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith of Bukhari that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My slave does not come closer to me with anything except with that which I have made obligatory upon him. And that's the best way to get closer to Allah by doing those things which are obligatory. So your obligatory prayers, for example, Fajr in Jama'ah, Isha in Jama'ah, in congregation, and then all of the other acts of worship which are obligatory upon a person, those remain consistent and steadfast upon them, and also try to increase in those actions also. And then after that, you can look at those things which are uh, which are nawafil and mustahab and recommend. And what, inclu what is included in righteous deeds is also staying away from bad deeds. When a person stays away from sins with the intention that this is a sin and something which is displeasing to Allah, a person is rewarded. And sins which are done in this month or in these 10 days are worse than sins which are done in other days. Because these days are from Ashur al -Hurm. They are from the, the sacred months. And these are sacred days. And this is why Qatala, rahimahullah, from the Tabi'een, he said, إِنَّ ظُلْمَ فِي الْأَشْهُرِ الْحُرُمِ أَعْظَمُ خَطِيئَةً وَوِزْرًا مِنَ الظُلْمِ فِي مَا سِوَاهِ That oppression and sins generally, they are more worse and more sinful and more blameworthy than if they were to, do, to be done in any other time other than in the sacred months. So increasing good deeds and staying away from sins is something that a person should be doing generally, but especially in these 10 days. And then also, what is also recommended is that a person fast during these 9 days. It's narrated, many of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ narrated that when these 10 days would come, the first 9, meaning all the way until the day of Eid, not including the day of Eid. So the first 9 days of the Hijjah, the Prophet ﷺ would fast. So a person should also try to fast in these days, especially the 9th, especially the 9th of the Hijjah, which is the day of Arafah, and which this year it will be next Friday because it is on Saturday. So Arafah 
uh, this year would be next Friday. So that is something from all of these nine days of Hajj should fast, but the one which has the most emphasis is the, the, the day of Arafah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, أَحْتَسِبُ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُكَفِّرَ الصَّنَةِ أَلَّتِي قَبْلَهُ وَالصَّنَةِ أَلَّتِي بَعْلَهُ That I hope that if a person he fasts on the day of Arafah, it will be an expiation, meaning it will be a means of his sins being forgiven for the previous year and for the following year to come. So subhanAllah, the fast of one day and you get the reward of your sins being forgiven for two years. And this doesn't mean that you are able to you know, just fast one day and then sin for two years. But what it means is that a person, because you don't know if it will be accepted or not, but it means that a person, he tries his best and he increases in all the different type of good deeds that he is able to do. And this fasting on the day of Arafah is only for the one who's not doing Hajj. If somebody's doing Hajj and he's there uh, at the Arafah on the day of Arafah, then it's not recommended for that person to fast because the Prophet ﷺ did not fast while he was doing Hajj uh, on the day of Arafah. And one of the wisdoms behind this is that so a person has more, not only fast, you become weaker, so a person has more energy to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day. <clears throat> so increasing in fasting in these days is something which all of us should strive to do. And also from the actions that a person should increase in doing is doing the takbirat. Saying, and there's different ways of saying it, all of them are uh, correct. And there's nothing which is specified that you have to say these words only. So any way a person says it, there's something along the lines of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. This is something that every single person should be saying out loud. And there's no restricted time a person can say any time that he wants. It's only when the day of Arafah comes in until the 13th is that a person should say it after every single salah. But during these days, a person can say any time. Whether it's after salah, during, during the day, once he's walking, once he's, whatever he's doing, a person should increase in doing this. And this is something which now has become a forgotten sunnah. You won't really find people doing it. The only time you'll find it is on the day of Arafah and after that, on the, on the day of Eid maybe, uh, that's after the salawat. Other than that, you won't really see people uh, saying the takbirat out loud. So saying this takbirat out loud, is a form of reviving this forgotten sunnah. And that every person that hears you say it and is motivated to say it also, you will also gain the reward of that person who is saying it. And that's what many of the Sahaba, Abu Huraira, Umar, and, and others, they would go to the marketplaces and they would say these takbirat out loud. And when they would say these takbirat out loud, this would encourage the other uh, companions and tabi'een and so on to also say these takbirat. So they will get the reward of all of these takbirat. However, it is important to mention that it is not legislated. And Noah has been narrated doing a takbir al-jama'i, which means everybody says a takbir in one go, in one voice, in one tune. That's not something which has been narrated. Rather, every single person just says a takbirat uh, by himself. If it ends up coinciding with somebody else's, not a problem. But, you know, sometimes people intentionally say, everyone say it together. That's not something which has been narrated and many of the ulama have spoken against it. And from the actions which are also recommended is the udhiyah, also known as the qurbani, the sacrifice. And the intention when the sacrifice is made before the tent is enter. However, it is important to mention a couple of rules that a lot of people are asking about which is that if a person does do this qurbani or udhiya, who is it obligatory upon, because a lot of people have asked me this throughout the week, who is it obligatory upon for them, or prohibited from cutting their hair and their nails? And this is obligatory, or it's prohibited for a person cutting the hair and nails upon the man of the house. Meaning, if even if that man has children, and even if those kids are married, and they've got their own jobs, it's not obligatory upon them. Unless the only time it would be obligatory is if those children were to live in, you know, there, the place where they live is separate and the bills are separate and they're paying everything separate, then that's a different scenario. But majority of the time, if everyone's living in one house, then it's only obligatory upon the, the man of the house. It's not obligatory upon everybody else. And so, I've said that it's most have it's recommended for the rest of the people to also uh, join in and not cut their nails and their hair. And if somebody does want to, help and participate in paying for this qurbani or this udhiyah, there's no problem um, in that, they can participate. 
But the actual Udhi is done from the, the man of the house or the one who everybody relies upon in the house, and that's who it is obligatory um, upon. And the time of the Udhiyah, so those people who are doing this Qurbani or the sacrifice, then, as you said, it's prohibited from them for, for them to cut their nails and their hair. And this starts from the Maghrib of the first day of the Hijjah all the way until the sacrifice is done. And the sacrifice is done normally after Salat al Eid. And if it is done in a different country and you don't know, or sometimes it's delayed by one or two days, then just give it a little bit of time after Salat al Eid, and that's when you're able to cut your, your hair and your nails. As for cutting your hair and nails before Salat al Eid, then that is not uh, permitted because the sacrifice has not been done. So the time of the sacrifice, which is done after the prayer of Eid, that's when a person is permitted to uh, cut his nails and his hair. So these are some of the rulings and some of the recommended actions for a person to do in these 10 days. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to implement what we said. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد I'd like to conclude the khutbah by just re-mentioning the hadith that we mentioned previously and it's a hadith that everyone should remember throughout these 10 days because these 10 days are normally neglected. The last 10 nights of Ramadan is something which a lot of people remember and put a lot of effort into. But when it comes to the, these first 10 days, a lot of people neglect and a lot of people forget. So try to remember this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, min ayyamin. There are no days al salihu fiha or righteous actions ahabba ila Allah are more beloved to Allah than these days. And of course, remember this, this hadith throughout these 10 days that Allah will inshallah motivate him to increase in these uh, in the good deeds. Uh, there's a number of uh, announcements. Firstly, we have uh, a pinballing uh, session for, for the youth, and that is uh, on Saturday, the 16th of July. The posters are on social media and also on the notice board. So, anybody who wants to uh, sign up, scan the QR code to register, inshallah. Likewise, the following week after that, on the 23rd, we have a sponsored trip to climb Mount Snowden and the objective of this is to raise money for the masjid so whoever is able to come then please come and those if you're not able to come at least try to uh, donate to the masjid and share the poster and the link so that uh, people can help and try to donate to the uh, masjid and uh, a few brothers have also asked and requested for dua there are some brothers who have some heart problems and others also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of these people a quick a swift and full recovery, and likewise all of the Muslims uh, throughout the world. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وألف بين قلوبهم وأصلح ذات بينهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم العن كفرة الذين يصدون عن سبيلك ويكذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين كلمتهم وزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا ترده عن القوم المجرمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم وشكروه على نعمه يعذكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون